This meeting is being recorded. Very good evening, everyone. I'm Dr. Venkatesh Karthikeyan, MD Community and Family Medicine Postgraduate Resident from Ames Patna. I'm glad to see that more than 500 medical students and young, doc young doctors from lengths and breadths of the country have registered in today's webinar. In the past year, IMA Junior Doctors Network has organized a series of webinars for the benefit of our junior doctors and medical students. In recent times, we have collaborated with the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Ames Delhi, IAPSM, CAHO, Star Health Insurance, Max Group of Hospitals, and with many national and international faculties. We got excellent feedback that our webinars are helpful for young doctors, and hence we are continuing this webinar series. As an MBBS student, I was very much eager to deep dive into research, and many of my friends had similar interests too. A boon for people like us is the ICMR STS, which is a short-term studentship offered by ICMR to kindle research among uh, research interests among medical students. But as MBBS students, you might be eager to get this grant, but might not have proper guidance for it. You might have several questions in your mind, like I don't know anything about research. All I have is interest. Am I eligible? How to find a good guide? How to find a good research topic? Will this affect my studies? How to write a good winning proposal? Etc. Etc. The Indian Medical Association Junior Doctors Network is organizing this webinar on basics in research for beginners to answer all these questions. I would like to thank our national chairman, Dr. Shijit Sir, and our JDN secretary, Dr. Parul Ma'am, without whose guidance and support this webinar would have not been possible. Now, I kindly request Dr. Shijit Sir to give the opening remarks. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Venkatesh. Uh, and a very warm welcome to Dr. T.S. Anish, uh, today's faculty. And also to all my dear little children uh, and the young doctors of the country. In fact, uh, we are quite overwhelmed that, uh, you know, the response had been huge. In fact, Vengadesh, uh, when me and Vengadesh discussed yesterday, he was telling, sir, uh, we'll have at least three to four days notice uh, to let this program happen. But I told, uh, let us try, because I believe that uh, the ICMR has given a uh, a, a deadline of uh, a, a later this week or something like that. And uh, many students were, in fact, uh, asking me uh, whether it will be possible to give some sort of orientation. So I thought that instead of speaking to a few of them personally, it would be good to have an All India webinar where, you know, our children from all over the country uh, can participate and also the young doctors can participate. And as Dr. Venkatesh told, research is a very, very important area, which is often ignored. Uh, often due to fear, we are not uh, confident enough whether we can do that. And people, including me, usually shy away from uh, doing research, though we are very good at treating patients, managing health, public health, and so on. So that is why, you know, we want to make it very simple. And we want to tell you what are the basics of medical research and why and how we should do that. It's our responsibility that uh, we contribute to the growth of science. We are all scientists in one way or the other. And we all have to do, we are all doing research. We are all learning every day. And it is uh, imperative that uh, we know the scientific terms and scientific parlors and scientific ways and methods on how to go about doing that. And the need is quite obvious. That is why we had been joined by more than 500 young doctors and medical students from all over the country. And uh, so that shows uh, how eager you are. And I promise you that we will not stop with this introduction. We will request all our faculty members and try to make it a weekly webinar or a monthly webinar where we will try to get into all the nuances of medical research. In fact, today we are blessed with the presence of Dr. T.S. Anish. He's a very, very close friend of mine, but he is much beyond that. Uh, he, he is a bundle of knowledge uh, and uh, he, I'm very proud to say that he teaches and guides me also in many of our research and other endeavors. And more than that, he's very passionate. He's a very passionate teacher. And he simplifies things to such an extent that he makes everything sound so very easy. And I thought I couldn't think of a second name uh, when we thought of this research, uh, uh, basics in research for beginners, uh, other than Dr. T.S. Anish. It's very easy to uh, teach PG students, but it's very difficult to teach kindergarten students. And that's exactly what Dr. Anish specializes in. So I'm very sure that we are all going to have a treat uh, for the next an hour or so. And Dr. Anish has simplified matters. He'll be presenting a few slides. And after that, uh, you there'll be a, a, a question and answer session where you can type your questions in chat box and Dr. Venkatesh would be 
reading that out and Dr. Anish would be answering the relevant ones. And all of you who have joined today would be getting uh, a, a certificate also from uh, the IMA Junior Doctor Network. So once again, I thank all of you for uh, this overwhelming response. In fact, this is quite inspiring. I thank Dr. Anish for agreeing for this one, uh, presentation at such a short notice. And above all, I thank uh, Dr. Venkatesh, uh, who is a veteran in you know, national seminars, who has made it happen at a drop of a hat. And he has assembled all these people and the best of the, um, of the uh, uh, media, which is ClearNet. And they are going to record that and they are going to make it uh, available in their YouTube channel as well. So it's a wonderful beginning and we can't expect for a much uh, brighter beginning for beginning research by the beginners. So all the best to all of you and uh, thank you very much to everyone once again. And now let's start with the proceedings. Dr. Venkatesh, uh, you may kindly introduce Anish and let him, he can start the presentation. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for your kind words. Uh, now, I'd like to introduce a honorable speaker for the day, Dr. Anish T.S. Sir. Sir is an associate professor at the Department of Community Medicine, Government Medical College, Trivandrum. is a member of COVID Expert Committee, Government of Kerala. Sir is a public health expert of Kerala Disaster Management Authority. Sir is the convener of Epidemic Control Cell of IMA Kerala and member of Research Cell of IMA Kerala. Sir is a PhD guide of Kerala University of Health Sciences. Sir has more than 50 research publications in peer-reviewed national and international journals. Sir is a specialist in infectious disease epidemiology and research methodology as well. With this very brief introduction, I would like to welcome Dr. Anish sir and request him to take over the session. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, respected Srijit sir, dear Vinkadesh, dear all. I hope that uh, I am able to, uh, uh, you, you can hear me well. Yes, we can. So this is a small introduction to a large topic, which is uh, research, not exactly research, but proposal writing. So proposal writing is a very integral part of research. You cannot write a proposal without knowing that what is research. But for this ICMR program, it is for students, especially undergraduate students, so sometimes we may be very beginners and sometimes these terms that they have used in this uh, 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 link or this Google form may be difficult to comprehend. So here I am trying to explain what the terms they are uh, using in that particular uh, Google doc that is shared. You, you can just go to this Google form and you can fill the form so that you can apply for this ACMR short student fellowship. So you may be aware of that particular link. It was shared by uh, Srijit sir. And at the outset, I would like to thank Dr. Srijit sir for his wonderful introduction, as well as what he is doing for the public health of India as such. Uh, so I think because of lack of time, I will straight away, I will go to the topic. So I have got only 10 slides, uh, including this uh, particular in, uh, this introduction slide as well as the thank you slide. So the content will be only eight slides. So I am not going to, to make, make some modern for you. Please, please. Okay. Uh, it has got this particular link. The ICMR is asking you only eight questions. So the five out of eight questions are related to your whereabouts, your name, maybe your phone number, your email ID, or which department you belong to, and all other things. From the question number six, it is very important. Six, seven, and eight. These are the three things that you have to look into. Six is department in which the STS is proposed. That, that is actually a very important question. Because most of the students, in my experience, they will first, at, at the first uh, notice, they may try community medicine. But I don't think community medicine is a, uh, it's the best choice. Sometimes if your inclination is towards public health, it is fine. But uh, community medicine may not be uh, the best choice for all students. Because uh, your interest is very, very important. So first, this particular invitation from ICMR has come. You can apply for a small grant. 
that is not for big money you may get some maybe 10000 rupees say maybe 25000 rupees what the exact amount now i don't know when i was uh, doing some or helping some students to do this thing it was only 10000 rupees but this money is not very important actually if it is 10000 rupees or 1 lakh that doesn't matter what matter is you are trying to get through this process and through this process you are learning a lot of things and if the proposal is approved by icmr you can come out you can include it in your cv and it is actually a big credit that icmr has approved your proposal so whenever you are choosing your department you have to consider a few aspects one of the most important aspect among that them is in what subject inside the medicine you have got a special interest sometimes you may be personally interested to that topic sometimes you may try to build a career in this particular topic for example if my ambition is to become a big neurosurgeon in future better try to take some very simple topic i am not going for i am telling you to go for very complicated topics but some simple topics related to neurology or maybe neuroanatomy or maybe neurosurgery if it is possible so that is a very important thing so you are beginners and you have got a very good future and you try to build that future along with the, the studentship program so that is a very important area while you are discussing the department in which the sts is proposed that means first of all you have to think about a problem okay there is for example post covid syndrome that is a very important problem that we are facing now and it has got many dimension it has got respiratory dimension that may be the most common and but sometimes the mild cognitive impairment uh, because of covid or post covid syndrome is also very important if sts is students uh, short studentship program or something like that uh, the, somebody is asking the full form of sts that we will discuss the later in later part okay uh, this is very important what you are going to study that should be relevant as well as you have got some special interest in it because i am trying to build my career in neurology i have got a passion towards neurology covid is a big issue for covid is creating some neurological issue uh, the, the like uh, mild cognitive impairment or brain fogging after post covid so i am selecting the topic uh, brain fogging after covid 19 or post covid syndrome so my study may be related to neurology and the department in which my uh, my proposal is in a neurology department or something like that and second part is the name of the faculty guide i found that it is very important to identify a, a faculty guide Uh, if you if i am come i am uh, just looking around what i can see is we have got fantastic doctors uh, in uh, our most of our department they are very good clinicians maybe indians may be the best clinicians all over the world but if you consider what the researches most of them are not good researches it is not because they have got some a lack of quality in doing research but actually they are not uh, intervene or you are, they are not involved in research process so that is very important to identify a faculty guide so if when i was sitting in department of community medicine government medical college trivandrum so many people will come to me and will just ask okay sir can you become my faculty guide so i used to tell them okay what is your topic then they will say that okay my topic is uh, some maybe gynecological issues i my topic is breast cancer so i may used to tell them if you are interested in the incidence of carcinoma breast in the community i can be the faculty guide and i am very happy about that but at your level it is very difficult to study the incidence of carcinoma breast in community level what you can do is because it is actually a, uh, it is a very difficult task to just to go to community and just go to your very houses and see whether the la- some ladies has got this uh, particular problem but it is very uh, easy if you have got a very good guide in your surgery because so many uh, ladies will come for surgical intervention for carcinoma breast and you can do very well in surgery then they will uh, used to ask me 
okay i will go to surgery and i will get some uh, connections with surgery i mean i will get i will discuss with the head of department of surgery and i will get back and can you again become a faculty guide so i used to tell them if you are going to do the study in surgery better you keep somebody in surgery as your faculty guide because they will have some kind of a stake in the work that is very important so that is i think for the short fact this studentship program one of the very important task you are in is to find out the department in which the sts is proposal and you have to identify a faculty guide and if there is some community medicine faculty or somebody is interested in epidemiology somebody can do some statistical analysis please help the students even if you are not the faculty guide you can help the students because if you look at the our clinical specialty because of the rush and because of the the particular burden of other work they are facing they may not be aware of the research methodology processes but the public health people can actually help them so that kind of a team building is very important and ima can facilitate that kind of team building so the 6 and 7 questions are uh, actually addressed and if you have got some doubts you can ask at the end of the, the session so can you just move to the next slide okay so that selection of your topic is very important first of all your interest that is very important because whenever we used to be there in the uh, public in the uh, medical curriculum we may be having our own interest so you have to choose some subject if you are going to or if you are uh, have got a fantasy towards pediatrics better you choose a topic in pediatrics because it is going to help you a lot you are try at least you are giving a proposal a scientific proposal which is related to pediatrics if icmr is approving this proposal you are going to conduct a paper even without the approval of icmr you can do this research at your own uh, maybe using your own, your own resources so you are going to do a work doing that work you are going to learn a lot and after the work you may have something in your hand as a written thing that that you have worked or you have built a team and you have worked something that is a very very important aspect that uh, you can in future suppose you are trying to build a career in pediatrics you can showcase that you have done a work so that is very important thing when i am sitting in my department so many old children used to come okay sir i have cleared the plab or i have cleared usmle we have done a work for 5 years back i don't have a copy with me at that point of time i was not realizing that this is this much important they are asking me what is there did you involve any kind of research work in the past do you have the copy of that so that is very important so they used to come to my department they have used to take a photocopy of the copy they have presented in the department it was presented by them only maybe 5 years back but they are not keeping a copy with them that is why they are coming from us or uk and to get that particular paper so that is very important for you so your interest you identify the topic based on your interest second one you be futuristic and you try to identify what is your career and how this work is going to uh, help you in building your career that is one thing third one is your current knowledge that is very important some if some if you are very much interested and you are knowledgeable in something and if you can increase the knowledge or to 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 some extent or you you are able to contribute some new knowledge to science that is also very important one of the most important thing is feasibility because at your age you may dream a lot and it may be very difficult because as uh, shri sir has already pointed out you have a lot to study you are not full time researchers it may be very difficult for you icmr may be giving you a small amount of money because so you may be may not be able to find out money sometimes you may be may not be able to find out other resources material resources may be uh, that is a very important thing so feasibility is very very important and the availability and accessibility of resources including guides guides are human resources you have got a very good guide in respiratory medicine who is very passionate for students and if you are able to manage some icmr projects you can involve that guide that is also very important 
if you are coming from a very resource poor setting where you are you are not able to find out any uh, good guides even the presence of guides in a clinical department is also very important uh, that is about human resource but not only human resource the availability of laboratories in some medical college good laboratories will be there so i was uh, trying to find out the presence of aluminum or some other heavy metals in breast milk in trivandrum medical college and i was found that it was not present in our medical colleges to find out the amount of trace elements in breast milk so i had to to send the samples to uh, uttar pradesh the, the lucknow uh, the mg that, that is uh, king george medical university so king george medical university has got a very good lab there if some students are there in pediatrics working in king george medical university it is very it is like they can use their lab so that is a very important thing so the use the utility or the availability or accessibility of resources are also very important and so many other externalities will also be there that may emerge as you are trying to plan a study so that is at the outset when you are selecting your topic topic is nothing but the some area to which you are going to work how you are going to to trim or how you are going to to uh, shorten your area of interest to a research proposal or something that we will discuss in the next few slides we are not going to discuss it in details because if you want to discuss me these things in detail definitely i need more time so that but this is also very important to just hear something the first time so that when you hear it in the second time you will just remember or you will learn more so eight this particular item eight that is the most important item all other seven things are uh, the the uh, is not that much important in this proposal writing so eight has got three, four part eight a eight b eight c and eight d uh, eight is something about writing the project eight a icmr is asking you to give uh, an account of the title of the proposed pro research project and it should be concise and yet sufficiently descriptive and informative that is a very important aspect when you write a title not only for this proposal whenever you write a title it should be concise and yet sufficiently descriptive and informative so i found that this particular write up even if it is a very small one it teach students a lot if you just go through the lines you will understand a lot of things so somebody has drafted it very beautifully without using much words so that it will you will be taught by these particular lines then they are writing title may include study design such as randomized control trial an observational study a case control study etc if you are trying to do a study which has got a very specific design it can it could also be included in the title for example uh, i am interested to study the effectiveness of uh, uh, metformin in reducing weight i am trying to do it in a random as a randomized control trial so that i can write my title effectiveness of metformin in reduction of body mass index a randomized control trial so the study or the title itself will show that it is a randomized control study that is actually a better design or which has got strong evidence base and this is a very important study but for a student it is very difficult to do a randomized control trial because of so many ethical and other issues that i am not going to discuss now so this is very important thing one is your title should be comprehensive as well as it should not affect the Com comprehensibility so there is a conflict between comprehensibility and comprehensiveness if you are trying to add a lot of words in your title and make it so comprehensive the problem is if somebody is reading the title it is very difficult for them to comprehend so this is actually a trade off that is a, the meaning of it should be concise and yet sufficiently descriptive and informative so the the rule of thumb is title should not be too long so that it may be uh co in incomprehensible it not should not be too long 
it should not be too short it should include all keywords okay whenever you prepare a title it should include all keywords for example in my previous title my drug is metformin so metformin is a very a keyword i am trying to find out the effectiveness of metformin in reducing the weight okay what is the effectiveness of metformin so the effectiveness word should be there metformin the word will be there uh, reduction of weight that word should be, should be there if i am doing it's a small study in one of the medical college maybe aims partner so you can write aims partner in the title itself that indicate that this is so not so generalizable i am a poor undergraduate student i am doing it in a very small amount of people or my patients coming to a particular medical department in a particular institute only so i am not trying to generalize it at all but you just see that i have got this kind of a finding so it may be repeatable in other settings also so that is very important thing so you just the key word means as you just uh, shift your shoes now you are not a researcher you are you are a reader then maybe you may be searching in internet to find out some uh, studies now what are the words that you are going to keep in google so if i am interested in effectiveness of metformin in reduction of weight i may write effectiveness metformin reduction weight or if i am under, interested to see any studies in india i may write india or something like that whatever things i am going to write in search engine you have to put it in your title so that if this study is going to be published then this is going to be in the limelight because it contains all keywords so that is a very important aspect while preparing your title it should contain all keywords but too lengthy titles will affect the comprehension of the title of of your work and another important thing is uh, the title should indicate the objective as well as the design Uh, if i am going to more detail to these terms the problem is it will take more time objective means what you are aimed for okay in my previous example you can see that i am aiming to study the effectiveness of metformin in reduction of weight that is there in my title second one is the in icmr is indicating that you can indicate the design so design is a blueprint of the study because it is very difficult in uh, to standardize studies uh, when i have got a question i do not have my own way to to have its answer suppose i want to find out some mango tree i may go come come out from my home and i will just wander around and i will find out the mango tree in my own ways but that is not the way of science the way of science has is has systematic so the systematic way of approaching is the is what the design mean so in medicine or in epidemiology there are a few study designs are there i think most of you might have heard about these designs largely the designs are divided into two descriptive designs and analytical designs descriptive design is nothing but you are trying to describe something for example what are the clinical features of diabetes you are trying to describe diabetes or what is the percentage of people suffering from diabetes in my particular village so that is a prevalence study i am trying to again i am trying to describe diabetes but it's burden the percentage of people suffering from diabetes which is known as the prevalence of diabetes these are descriptive studies because you are trying to describe second part is analytical studies analytical studies means you have got a hypothesis and now you are going to test the hypothesis so i have got a hypothesis okay, the people obese people has got a higher tendency to become diabetic so i am comparing obese people and non obese people following them up and seeing that whether obese people has got a high incidence of diabetes compared to non obese people so it is an analytical study okay for a layman you just look at the study if the study comprised of only one group that may be descriptive if the study is comparative with two group that may be analytical because why you want to compare because you want to compare to find out some one group is different from the other 
So you are trying to test a hypothesis. Again, in descriptive studies, you have got cross-sectional studies, case series, even case studies, just like you are doing in your clinics, all are descriptive. And analytical studies, you have got case control studies, cohort studies, trials. Case control and cohort, again, it is very easy to understand. You, I have already mentioned that in analytical studies, there will be two groups. You look at the groups. If the groups are assembled based on some outcome factor, for example, in my previous example, diabetes and obesity. Obesity is the exposure factor. Obesity will lead to diabetes. That means diabetes is the outcome. In the relationship between obesity and diabetes, I am considering obesity as the exposure and diabetes as the outcome. If I am comparing diabetic people to non-diabetic people, it may be case control study. If I am comparing obese people and non-obese people, this is cohort studies. In cohort studies, two groups will be there assembled based on the exposure. And in case control study, there will be two groups assembled based on the outcome. These are the simple ways to just remember this study design. Whatever may be the study design, better you keep the name of the study design also in the title, if especially if the design is a very special design, like case control study, cohort study, trial, or sometimes a diagnostic test evaluation or something like that. Uh, because if I am going into details, it will take more time because I am, so I am just skipping to the next slide, please. Okay, in 8B, we are just asking, in 350 words, you describe the current knowledge available. That is a rationale, is the heading. And you describe the current knowledge available on the subject area, critical gaps in knowledge, its relevance and application to local, national, and international context, and the research question, which is the project aims to address. Very beautifully drafted, very simple words and very limited words. So if you are following this thing in 350 words or 450 words, this is how we people write the introduction part of a research article. You try to describe the current knowledge available on the subject area. So the, when you are writing a scientific proposal or if you are writing a scientific article, describing current knowledge available on a subject area doesn't mean that what is in your mind. It is not writing down what is in your, in your mind. As an individual, you may have got your own preoccupied ideas. We as scientists, we are not interested in your preoccupied ideas. Rather, we are interested in scientific facts. So as a scientist, you are supposed to give the current knowledge available on the scientific facts. So that means if you want to write the current knowledge available on the subject area, there should be a thorough literature search. This part should be written based on a thorough literature search to how to quote the references. Whenever you are saying something, better you quote the reference. Why you are saying like, like that? It should be there. But in this proposal, usually in proposal, there should be how to write the references. But in this particular ICMR proposal for students, I am not seeing any place for separately for references. But even if there is no, they are more not mentioning about references, better you keep the references. If you are telling that, okay, in, the incidence of post-COVID post syndrome in India is between 10 percentage to 30 percentage. Within bracket, you write that based on which paper you arrived in that conclusion. Suppose the author's name is Ray Lakshmi, and it does, if the study is published in 2021, then you can write that Sri Lakshmi 2021. Okay, so somebody, if I can just go back and see whether that kind of an information was given or not. So that is a very important thing that it may be greatly appreciated if you are giving sufficient references for your arguments in your proposal. And second one is critical gaps in knowledge. That is a very important thing. Why you want to do study? In, study, in research, there is a phrase known as uh, inventing the wheel again. Somebody made a round figure based on wood and he's just 
telling that Eureka, I have found the wheel. There is nothing exciting in finding the wheel because the wheel was founded by the, the Stone Age man uh, maybe thousands of years back. So that is not very important or exciting for a modern man. You are Definitely you are using wheels, but it is not about finding wheels again and again. So the critical gaps, you have to address some critical gaps that is known as a research gap. So whenever you write, first you write what is already available or what is already known. And second part, you try to address what is unknown. That is known as the research gap. And you fit your research question. Research question is that question to which your research is going to answer. That is your research question. In other words, it is the aim of your study. So you study, you tell that, okay, we have got some information about the incidence of post-COVID syndrome from this paper. And it is saying that 10 to 30 percentage of people are going to suffer from post-COVID syndrome. And this paper tell that this respiratory issues are there, locomotor issues are there, though X issues are there, Y issues are there. But nobody has studied the cognitive impairment because of that is the research gap. Nobody has studied the, the burden of cognitive impairment that the old age people of India has borne because of COVID. So I am going to study that aspect. I may not be able to study the entire India, but as a medical student who is sitting in a particular medical college, I can definitely come, come out with something that is available in my college or my institution. So that is your research gap. So it should include what the study aimed for and better you have to keep your references also. Next. Okay, gate C is a very dedicated area. Uh, I think it is because you are children and uh, compared to adults, children has got a peculiarity, a quality that they can ask foolish questions. They have, they will, they are the innovative. In innovators, they can find out new. You can you, they can ask new question. They can ask new answers because they don't have a pattern. So ICMR is trying to tap that ability of the students that they specifically ask what is a novelty or innovation. Sometimes you may come out with uh, some uh, te new techniques. We do not know. Sometimes you may invent a new culture media for your microbiology lab so that we can, we may be using some very, uh, for example, uh, when I was uh, trying to, to uh, study cutaneous leishmaniasis in Trivandrum, cutaneous leishmaniasis, uh, that particular uh, pro mastigot form of leishmania is grown in NNN media. Uh, that is not available in Trivandrum. So we were trying to make that media using rabbit blood and all other things. Microbiology people were helping us like anything to prepare that particular media, mm -hmm. which was not available in Kerala. Because in Kerala, the Kalasar is not very common. So that kind of things can be done. You can find out a new media where you can uh, maybe, uh, you, you can, again, you can grow maybe some viruses. You do not know. So that is a very important thing. Sometimes you may invent a new uh, incision for thyroid surgery because if you do, even if the, the incision you that you have put for thyroid surgery is reducing the bleeding, definitely it will uh, has got some cosmetological issues because it is in, just in front of your throat. And most of the the people undergoing thyroid surgeries are young females. So if you are able to identify some other plane, maybe very much low to the thyroid, which is not, I think that kind of surgeries are already there. If you are able to identify that kind of things based on your, if you are a genius and you are able to identify the, uh, the, the blood flow of vessels through the neck and you can identify some particular plane, so that the incision in that plane, the bleeding will be much less and cosmetically it will be much better. You can, in, you, you can discuss it with your surgery professors. And you can come out with some new innovation. So I, don't, I do not know what is the innovation is because I am not an innovator. I am an old man. 
so that is a very important thing so you if you have got some novelty or innovation in your project you describe it in 100 words the icmr is giving you a particular area to explain this also these things are very important whenever you are to con- trying to conduct a study or choosing a research topic or you are trying to find out a uh, objective we used usually give a mnemonics you just look at finer feasibility i i will explain novelty ethics and relevance feasibility is very important thing for an undergraduate uh, student i think feasibility is the most important so i may tell that you have to go for some innovative with novelty so many things but if i am given uh, an uh, an opportunity or given a task to choose between feasibility and innovation i will go for feasibility because feasibility is a very important thing whenever you do is not only the icmr project we if you are trying to do your thesis pg thesis feasibility is the most important thing because at the end of day you have to submit your paper and go you cannot be there in the medical college for years feasibility may not be a big problem for me because i am in the service for last 12 years and i may if i am not going to have that kind of ill health or i am not going to die at a very early age i may be there for years so that is not very important thing for me i can think in, in maybe in something innovative or something uh, demanding but for you you may be there for in the department for months so that is very important uh, feasibility is the first choice or first consideration novelty is very important thing ethics is a very very important thing whenever you do or you practice anything in medicine ethics is the number one thing don't do anything unethical and the research ethics is something different from the clinical ethics it is actually a part of clinical ethics but it is different for example a patient is coming to you uh, with with a uh, with uh, some fe- maybe fever there is you can just just by asking a consent you can just examine them because there there is an implied consent the patient is coming to you with fever you are a doctor the patient very well know that you are a doctor you are going to examine them the patient know that uh, you are going to examine them but asking the permission is a courtesy definitely you have to do and you have to ask permission but if you are doing it for research if the patient is your subject in research you have to get the written informed consent if it is a trial the process of taking that consent should be uh, recorded video recorded it's a very important thing i am just giving you one aspect of the ethics but so many things are there. so don't do any research that can harm the individual or harm the society there is no no scope for that kind of a research as a doctor we should not do that it is very important and relevance the relevance is also very important as we were discussing uh, post covid syndrome and all so the public health relevance clinical relevance which is very very important that you may be wondering what is i to fill that mnemonics okay fine the i is interesting so feasibility your subject or your topic or your question question means nothing but the question that your research is going to answer should be feasible interesting novel ethical and relevant interesting is something very synonymous to relevant so to to make that finer correctly we are putting i also next one it is not like that interesting means that by just hearing your topic somebody is laughing it is not like that interesting means it is creating some scientific interest that's it next one the 8b is a very important area I, actually that is the project writing so in 700 words you have to describe the study setting study setting means where your data collection is taking place and the importance of that place okay if you are most often you are going to to study some clinical settings of a medical college sometimes the field setting of a medical college because for community medicine and all there will be some field area inside the medical college or sometimes there will be a rural uh, 
uh, area will be there maybe 25 kilometers from your college and you can go there and do some community studies doing community studies are very very important most often study done in communities are given more weightage than studies given in hospital because it is very difficult to do community based studies but uh, again just look at the feasibility i am not discouraging you to from doing community based study but without a better help from your faculty it is very difficult to do community based studies it, definitely it is easy to do hospital based studies so when you are writing that okay my uh, uh, this setting is uh, internal Medi medicine department of government medical college patiala okay you have to tell in, a, in another sentence what is the importance of that one then you can say that okay this government medical college is catering three districts of southern uh, maybe bihar or something like that you can write so that is that will just give you a glimpse that your study setting is very very important then you have to write down your study design and again you can write something why you are choosing that design if that is very something very important for example i am choosing for a case control study to find out the risk factors of post covid syndrome so i have got two groups one group is people develop post covid syndrome after detecting covid second one is people do not having post covid syndrome so these two groups are compared and my study design is a case control study that you can write in a sentence and sampling strategy sampling strategy is a very important thing sampling means how much generalizable is your study uh, the randomness of your study participants for example if you are uh, going to a field area and you are trying to study the dietary pattern of that particular area what they are eating so you come to you happen to be in a slum and you are taking so many people from the slum area then you may have an impression that people are not consuming well the food is scarce the protein energy malnutrition is rampant but if you happen to be in a posh area of the city you may be come out with something different both are wrong so that is because of your sample so how from uh, this population or the large group of people post covid syndrome people suffering from post covid syndrome is a large population from this large population how you found out the 100 people who are included in your study is very important that you have to write it down if there is some random process has taken place you have to mention it was taken randomly even if there is no random process you can write that how you assembled these people most of the sampling technique that we use in clinics are consecutive sampling that means if the my study participant or my eligibility criteria to include my study is a person suffering from post covid syndrome so i am sitting in the opd if the a person is sufficiently qualifying the inclusion criteria i will include them into study one by one if they are able to provide me the informed written informed consent that is known as uh, consecutive sample that can also be used but better you mention how the participants are enrolled to your study that is your sampling strategy sample size calculation is very important area nowadays it is given undue importance what i i would say uh, but that is there uh, so it is very important to get a statistical help for sample size calculation because uh, sample size calculation is important I, for example uh, in kerala maybe all other part of india you may be knowing mangoes you may be knowing jackfruit also mangoes i think it is universal in india jackfruit i don't know how much it is suppose i have got a stone in my hand and i am aiming a jackfruit it is very easy for me to hit the jackfruit because jackfruit jackfruit is very 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 big thing but if i want to hit a mango sometimes the uh, i have to use five throws but for jackfruit jackfruit only one throw maximum two throw so for to hit a jackfruit i need only small number of throws 
But for mangoes, I have to hit large number of those. Sample size calculation is like this. To aim, I have written my aim and rule. I am going to study this. What is this enough or sufficient number that may be enough to address this particular question? You have got some statistical procedures for addressing this issue. Better you use that statistical method because it may be impressive for, for people. But suppose if there is only 500 individuals suffering from post-COVID syndrome in your hospital and the record is available for the whole 500, I am going to take the whole 500. That is my sample size. That can also be there, but better to maybe impress the evaluators. You may go for a statistical calculation of sample size. We have got many methods to calculate that. I can take a, maybe a class on how to take sample size calculation but better you get the help from your community medicine department because they may be better or best in giving you a, a better sample size with, the, with or without the help of statistician. So feasibility, you have to write down how much you are able to finish this work and the expected outcome. Expected outcome is about the utility. Okay, okay, you have found out something for, okay, okay. Okay, because of that, community is going to get something that you have to mention the expected outcome. Maybe the, this is a very important thing, interdepartment and interinstitutional inter collaboration. I do not know how much you can collaborate with other institutions. If you are able to collaborate, for example, you are doing some genetic analysis of people coming out with post-COVID syndrome. So many people have, have infected with COVID, but only some is developing post-COVID. If there is some genetic predisposition, well, is it able to identify that particular genes? So in future, at the time of large pandemics that is going to appear in future, at that point of the time, like we can use some genetic engineering so that to, to address the long sequelae of pandemics. So very bright idea, very good idea. But the problem is there is nobody is doing some genetic analysis in medical colleges. But some institutions will be in the periphery. Suppose if there is a researcher who is loving to collaborate with students, if you are lucky enough, you can have a collaboration. But the point is, if you have got a collaboration, that may be the collaboration with the medicine and pharmacology and microbiology in your institute, or it is a collaboration from the medical uh, department of your institute with a gen gen this uh, genetic department of other institute. Collaborations are very, very important and it may be valued high because collaboration means you are a true leader. Only a leader can collaborate. Whenever it's my experience, if I, am, I alone write a proposal, even if the proposal is very nice, the chance of uh, rejection is high. But if I am writing a collaborative proposal, the chance of acceptance is very high because collaboration means it is going to last. Because if I fail, my team or the, my, the, the person who is collaborating to me may be able to pull it up. That is a very important thing. So then timeline and budget. Timeline is about use of uh, time resources and budget is about use of human or material, or especially money, how you are going to handle money. Any funded research, if the funding agencies may be giving you only 1,000 rupees, sometimes the funding agency may be giving you 10 crore rupees, whatever it may be, it is your responsibility that how you are using that money. So budget is a very important thing. You can write in a very simple way. That means this, okay, I have got only two heads. I have to buy some papers. Okay, I have to print some, some questionnaires. I have to maybe, I have to travel like this or something like that. Also, I am using this 10,000 rupees or 20,000 rupees. So that is very important thing, but you have to write down. Okay. So ne next slide. Next. Okay, this is a timeline chart. It is otherwise known as GAN chart. So you can use this kind of a chart to, or you can give a calendar. This is a very important thing. Usually in project writing, people use GAN chart. 
can chart in this chart you can see that my from january uh, half to or january to march i am using for planning but during the planning itself i will start research it is not about medical research okay after research i am going to design uh, but by while the phase of designing start my research will continue that is the meaning of that overlap sometimes it may not overlap if the the the, the bars are not overlap that means it is uh, separated by time but if something is overlapping that means it is simultaneously happening so the whole process will start by january and it will end by july so this is a tool for the person who is planning this work suppose in march i am not able to or in april i am not going, not able to go for implementation that means my work is actually delayed or it is lagging so i have to increase my speed so it is a very important planning tool that is gan chart next one next slide this is a simple budget okay in budget usually you have to write down what is item and how much quantity you require what is the unit cost for quantity unit cost into number of quantity you will get total then you add you will get the whole total so okay this is my this is this was my last slide next one next is my last slide that is my thank you slide and please see that your data is published very 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 important you do whatever things thing you may not be able to publish in a very high impact peer reviewed journal you try to publish anything everywhere don't publish in predator yeah, predator journals predator journals means you are giving some money and they are publishing it without checking the quality of your work you maybe your name will be there if your name is there in predator journals that is something you are becoming notorious so try to publish it and because you are anyway if it is a small research conducted by a medical student or is it is a large maybe a double blinded control trial conducted by your professor you are using the time energy and resources of your patients and the society as a whole so it is very important thing and let people recognize your contribution and the another advantage of the publication is you need not come to your mother department to again check or to receive a copy of your original work because it is no no need it is there in the international databases that you have conducted the study already so you can just give the link to your maybe your uh, new project officers or in the university so that they can just check what is the importance of your study so that is a very important thing because most of the studies even the pg thesis is done, that is done in our institutions are not published so that is a very important thing so if you start it you end it well that is a very important thing. so i have finished i have got only 10 slides thank you if you have got some questions that i can discuss with you uh, thank you so much sir for the excellent session uh, like hope uh, the knowledge gained out of the session will be of great help to our medical students and junior doctors who have joined us today thanks a lot for your time sir despite your busy schedule let us take a few questions from audience audience please start uh, typing your questions in the chat box can you stop sharing the screen uh, yes sir uh, so we have a question uh, like from dr harsha sashi she's asking uh, is these kind of uh, how this grant writing is useful for graduates like we have icmr sts for students do we have anything for graduates or pg students sir usually uh, grant writing is not specialized or it is not categorized for graduates undergraduates post graduates something like that uh, you, anybody can write a grant write for a grant if the grant is uh, they are supportable usually funding agency will give you the support but the problem is uh, one thing is in india undergraduate students are not coming up with research there is not research culture that may be the reason that uh, the, this icmr is coming out with uh, helping the proposal 
by undergraduate students if you are a graduate doing for you doing your post graduate you can uh, write researches or grants proposals for agencies which is related to your research area for example if you are conducting uh, tb research we can uh, ask uh, funding from rndcp if you are doing some research in hemophilia you can be help from dedicated programs if you are conducting some studies in tribal area tribal department has got dedicated funds for that so it is just you have to identify the resources that is available so in the, in whatever capacity definitely you are going to get the research funding but your affiliations are very important if you happen to be a faculty member or you happen to be a professor and if your name is there already published so many papers and if you are recognized so much the chance of getting a funding will be definitely high thank you sir thank you so much sir so next question is by dr saumik he has asked how to get our studies published in national or international journals this uh, it is very important to the, this area of conducting the study is very important if you have got a very good data with you if you have got a very good data with you and if you are writing it nicely this high chance that good journals will you can get it published in good journals and another thing is uh, if you have got money you can give money and publish but sometimes that may be as i have already pointed out in predator journals but there are good journals or also there so nowadays that is the culture uh, because this is known as the open publication policy what usually in previous years because the journal people has to run the journal so they need money so what they usually do is it will they will publish your data because your data is good so many people will be enthusiastic to read your data because again your data is good but uh, you the person who is reading this article has to pay money for the journal that was a usual culture that was happening but now it has changed the money you have to give the money to publish doesn't mean that your data is bad your data is good but better you give the money so that the reader will get it free of cost who has got more money in your hand you just have to think it in a western perspective okay suppose you are conducting some research in a western university your research may be getting so many grant and you may be having enough money with you to get it published so you give the money to the journal so that the reader who may be sitting in africa sometimes he may be sitting in some underdeveloped country and he can access the article without giving the money so nowadays so many money is involved in research but so better you ask for publication fee also when you ask for proposal it is not for the undergraduate students but generally if you write for some proposal you keep some amount of money to get it published in a very good journal in open forum or the uh, open so the this area thank you sir uh, sir uh, we'll take last few questions uh, dr bagya has asked sir due to recent teachers eligibility criteria at nmc uh, pub- sorry uh, publication criteria have changed and it is difficult to publish in journals like ijph and ijcm how to solve this issue how to find the truly indexed journals actually the new uh, criteria is much better than the, the older criteria the older criteria was you have to publish as a first author or second author either first author or second author in some of the article or journals this journal selection this uh, indexation that was given that included some predator journals also previously so if you are if you can publish some uh, data which is invalid invalid data could be published in your name as a first author or second author that was the previous state of affairs now it has changed you can publish a first author second author third author or the the uh, corresponding author first author corresponding author second author or third author that means in a single paper you can claim authorship for four people rather than two they have made it four but the problem is 
the gainer should be a quality gain so that is why our people are finding it very difficult to get it published so that is actually a good sign for me so that the quality of the papers will also improve because of that new change by nmc that is actually welcome a stand from nmc thank you sir so dr gopinathan has asked uh, how to get involved and interest in data collection it is boring sometimes so we'll keep it as a last question sir how to get involved and gain interest in data collection one thing is uh, it is uh, interest as an adult uh, you are getting interested when you are involved and uh, you have got some knowledge in it and if you are going to getting something out of that that is a very very important thing so it is a very very basic principle in pedagogic learning and andragogic learning that in pedagogic learning the interest has to be created by the pers- person who is delivering the lecture or who is conducting the session but in andragogy the interest has to come from the participant based on his experience what he is going to gain out of that so that is a very important thing you try to acquire more knowledge about what you are doing what you are going to gain out of that definitely the interest will follow that is what i think because for me also i will just uh, stop by sharing my personal experience uh, i before coming to medicine i was uh, studying bsc physics and one of my subsidiary was statistics because i am very much interested in physics and my passion was to become an engineer a space engineer so that is why i went for uh, this graduation in physics but i found statistics very boring but i come turned to be a doctor then a community medicine fellow and now a researcher and in every day i am reading statistics with now with so much compassion and so much interest so it will definitely change if you involve definitely all topics will be interesting there is no boring topic in on in the whole world thank you sir thanks a lot for patiently answering all our queries sir uh, due to lack of time we are skipping few questions uh, so uh, now i'll uh, request uh, the national chairman of ima jdn dr shijit sir to give the closing remarks uh, i think uh, our uh, national secretary dr parul has joined and uh, i'll request dr parul to uh kindly say the uh, the vote of thanks and before that uh, i think uh, we had a marvelous session in fact i should say that uh, you know uh, right now i feel as a real beginner i have learned a lot thank you very much dr anish and if i had to learn uh, i am sure that all our children would have learned much you made it very simple and very understandable and i am sure that all of would, them would be excited yes of course uh, dr anish was given a very wide topic so he had to you know sort of uh, address everything and uh, anything and everything and he also knew that he is uh, addressing both the students and young doctors which so it becomes very difficult because had it been specifically first year second year third year medical students it would have been much more easier so that is why he had gone into some depth and details uh, regarding some of the proposals so uh, the young very young children need not get scared with the, all, all these things and uh, like uh, he also had to address uh, the young doctors also so it is very general and uh, i would request uh, dr anish for two things one uh, if uh, he agrees uh, to share the slides maybe we can share it to uh, the all the students who have joined today and uh, venkatesh can uh, can do that and two you know some of the doubts uh, you know the session was very short he needed at least around 10 to 15 hours to explain everything uh, so you know all the doubts which you have you can uh, send it to dr venkatesh and uh, venkatesh you please uh, you know uh, you 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 uh, what you you, you uh, make it make them very concise specific bullets not everything but very relevant four or five doubts you can ask uh, opinion of dr anish and then you know get back to those students so that uh, you know those doubts can be clarified and the last thing is that we are quite excited by both the lecture and the participants so i think uh, we'll take it up as a mission dr parul herself is a medical teacher we'll take it up as a mission and at least uh, if not weekly we will try for a fortnightly or at least a monthly webinar in which uh, uh, dr anish and all his team uh, can explain one by one each of these things like study designs you know statistical methods uh, randomization and all these things uh, one one thing at a time we will take up in maybe around 10 or 14 sessions msn did conduct one last year uh, but you know the reach wasn't too much 
but right now we'll try to reach uh, many more so i think uh, um, it was a marvelous session to begin with and i am extremely grateful to dr anish uh, for conducting this uh, such uh, so so beautifully and marvelously and i'm sure that you have excited all young minds of medical students all over the country thank you very much and now let me hand over to dr parul uh, to formally express the word of thanks thank you sir it is actually a privilege or just a happy thing that you remember my name when this kind of a topic has come into your mind thank you sir. now i request our dynamic national secretary of ima jdn dr parul ma'am to deliver the word of thanks uh okay no parul was here right now but uh, suddenly she got disconnected uh but anyway that's okay uh i think uh, we have had a brilliant session venkatesh uh, you, you can express the word of thanks and then we can close thank you sir uh once again i would like to thank dr anish sir dr shizit sir dr parul ma'am and all our 500 plus registered participants for making this webinar a grand success the certificates for the session will be mailed to you before this weekend thanks a lot everyone we are closing now Thank you very much the meeting is closed